Hi everyone, my name is Theo Schwartz, I use they, them pronouns, and I'm here to introduce our next speaker, Lydia Pru, who is the Youth Program Director of Youth Move National. I will turn the time over to them. So I know everyone's just coming back from lunch. I appreciate uh, that that's a very um, delicate time for either coffee or a nap or something. So thank you for joining me here today. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and walk through some of the points uh, I was asked to kind of bring here about youth engagement and policy making. I'll introduce myself a little bit, Youth Move National, and then we'll kind of roll through what we've got here. All right. Yeah, we've got about 40 minutes together, um, and so that includes some time for Q&A. We're just going to go ahead and jump in. I'll talk about myself, about Youth Move National. We'll talk about some foundations of youth engagement and how youth engagement can look in policy work. And we'll close with a call to action uh, that I have for y'all from some young people I've been speaking with. As we go, um, because time is limited, I'm gonna ask that if you have questions, go ahead and pop them in the chat. And then we'll go back at the end and like make sure we covered everything. Uh, I know that's not as conversational. I definitely prefer to be more talkative with y'all, but um, time is a real thing. And I wanna make sure we're honoring that. So first, um, myself, I'm Lydia Pru. I use they, them pronouns. I am in Worcester, Massachusetts. Uh, so I've been with Youth Move National for about six years. I'm one of our director of youth programs. Uh, I focus a lot on our work around youth peer support implementation and uh, evaluation and improvement. I work with a lot of youth peer providers and I get to work with their supervisors as well as employing agencies and organizations to like really make sure that ecosystem around youth peer support is healthy and robust. Um, there's a little more about me on this slide. I'm not going to go through all of it, um, but I will share that the one thing bringing me some joy this week is my nephew, who's two, got to work with me yesterday. Uh, he's very cute. He participated in some icebreakers, did a wonderful job. No job offers yet, but if anyone's looking, let me know. His mom and dad would love him to bring in uh, a little extra for the household. So uh, if you would like, please join me in lieu of an icebreaker, just popping into the chat, something that's bringing you some joy today. I think this is something that we could all use a little bit more uh, naming and uplifting in our day-to-day -day work. So while I'm introducing Youth Move, go ahead and drop in the chat, just something that's making you smile, bringing you some joy. So a Youth Move National, for folks who are unfamiliar with us, uh, we are a youth-driven national organization. We are a membership organization, so we have about 70 chapters across the country. Uh, these chapters are working in their own local communities on the projects and issues that are most important to those young people. So while overall we have this goal of connecting and supporting and developing youth leadership and advocacy, each community is gonna look different, right? The folks uh, in Worcester who are doing good work might be focused in different areas than the folks in Salt Lake City because communities are different across the country and we wanna make sure that that individual uh, considerations are taken, taken under advisement. We envision a future in which young people are valued and they are empowered leaders, they're advocates and they're designers of communities that are built for all youth to thrive. So while we talk a lot about lived experience and about mental health needs and about trauma experiences, uh, we really are talking about all young people. If we build a world that works for, for many with these kinds of experiences, many, many young people can benefit even if they're not identified as that target audience. So this is what we do. There's lots more information about us online. And at the end of this presentation, there's chances to connect with us on social media. So please stay in touch. I wanted to start off with a couple of foundation, foundational pieces about youth engagement. Um, there's a piece here from the Disparities Research Unit at Mass General Hospital, and there, uh, there's a link to the bottom of it so when I, I can share out the slides and y'all can click through. But to adequately understand youth experiences, behaviors, cognitions, and emotions, and to address the challenges that come with that, we, uh, there's an imperative to directly ask how youth frame the problem and what we can do to solve it. We really need to be talking directly to young people, not only, I would say, in that design process, that brainstorming process at the beginning of policy work, but throughout the whole policy life cycle. I've been very fortunate to meet with some of your youth organizers, as well as members from our Youth Best Practice Committee here at Youth Move National. And these are some of the uh, pieces of feedback I heard as we were talking, just sort of making sure that I was on the right track for what folks uh, were hoping to hear today, right? And these are some of the, the challenges. We do have a slide with good things too, don't worry. 
Um, so a lot of times folks are sharing with me that they are not heard or that they're heard and then what they shared is just kind of discarded. Uh, a lot of times young people are saying we want to change the status quo because the status quo, how the system works currently hurts us or doesn't serve us. Uh, and then sometimes systems folks are surprised by that or systems are not built to be flexible and to shift so, so quickly. Uh, follow through is often missing and that can be really discouraging. And there's parts of youth engagement and this policy work, including things like the budget, which are often perceived as too boring or too hard for young people to understand. But there are a couple of young people who are really speaking to the fact that budgets are moral documents, right? They reflect our values, they reflect what is important to us, and they're a very important part of much of our policy work. Uh, and so working with young people to understand and to build stronger, blended, uh, community-minded budgets is really important. Sure, you've heard a lot about why we're here today already. I'm joining you late in your day, so thank you very much again for this invite. We're, we're here, right, because involving young people in research and evaluation, especially in um, policy work, right, improves that quality and relevance of both the research and the programs, policies, organizations that are working and serving our young people, right? Uh, it, it's essential. In a lot of fields like design or tech, right, things go out to focus groups to try them out, tell us what you like, what you don't like, how should we approach this in the future? It doesn't really happen with youth systems like so much. And so building up that capacity uh, is super important to build good, strong systems. Um, it also has the byproduct, right, of helping youth develop skills and they'll need those to, to thrive as adults, right? And can take them to a ton of different areas, education, different work, um, different vocations, even like outside of our own fields. So knowing that it's important for both uh, the young people and the, the work we're doing. I always like to define youth engagement at first, just because it's kind of one of those buzzwords that like we hear a lot in this work now. And at Youth Move National, we consider youth engagement to be a strategy. It's one way of giving youth a meaningful voice and role and authentically involving them in the work towards changing systems, achieving different goals, but things that directly affect their lives. It's important to understand youth engagement as a strategy because it's not like um, when you attack when you go towards a project we're gonna we're gonna use youth engagement we're gonna do youth engagement youth engagement is a whole bunch of things I have a lot of ideas to present with you so it's kind of this bucket of things we can do right that involve youth and young adult voice partnering collaborating uh, and the activities and the, the things in that are, are diverse and, and exciting. So youth engagement is a strategy. We use youth engagement to achieve goals. Benefits of youth engagement uh, contribute to the design and implementation of new policies, uh, which are usually spelled correctly. I apologize for that. But new policies, right? So thinking uh, with clear new eyes, being able to look at a situation fresh, uh, being able to design something that is going to address a need that exists. Youth involvement uh, engagement changes into institutional culture and practice. It shifts how we do our jobs, shifts how we work and how we think. It builds awareness and a common understanding between young people, systems, and supportive adults working in those systems so we can align ourselves and move more smoothly through this change work. It builds a sense of community and a sense of self-efficacy within the young people, and it improves individual and organizational outcomes. So it's got benefits for the young person involved, for the supportive adult staff who are engaged and for the agency and community. Feels like it's a, a, a win, right? It's a no brainer. Within this though, we see this challenging cycle happen a lot at Youth Move National. I wanted to sort of share it and name it so that we kind of know what we're up against, right? Engaging people, young people in policy design and implementation and evaluation is hard work, right? And we need to remember that intention and impact are two very different, but very important things, right? Our intentions for bringing in youth voice or young adult staff and contributors, right, may be genuine. We may be in an organization that wants nothing more than to shift all of our practices and policies to be youth-driven, budget, hiring, board development, everything. We're ready to do it all. And sometimes we work with folks, um, do we work with them? Sometimes we see folks, who are kind of more using youth voice as like a checkbox or kind of a manipulative tactic or a tokenistic tactic. Either intention can result in the same impact, right? 
Um, and that sort of happens between this yellow and blue, blue part of our cycle, right? Um, youth engagement requires someone's effort, someone's adaptability, their weekend time, some evening time, requires driving around a lot of times, there's mentorship, there's a requirement for an open mind and being able to listen. It's a lot of work. And so before agencies or communities or organizations really commit to the idea of youth engagement as a strategy, we want them to be sure that they assess their current agency culture, their current capacity. Uh, make sure we're identifying our supportive champions who can really like talk about the cause and really speak to folks about why youth voice and engagement, particularly in this policy work is essential. Someone's gonna be able to identify or create new policies or practices so youth engagement might be able to even just start, happen. We also need to think about the process of eliminating or adapting current, pro uh, eliminating or adapting current practices and policies that might be causing harm or might be benign and just not doing anything, maybe a silly uh, use of time. Uh, an example of, well, we'll go through the challenge first, right? So this, this uh, cycle, right, kind of starts at the top with our orange circle where we're excited to bring in youth voice. Again, that might be because we're ready to dive all the way in, or it might be a tokenism thing. Regardless, we're going to go around this circle, right? Next, we recruit some young people to our youth advisory board, or we hire some young adult staff to participate in planning. These folks have lived experience. Eventually, youth and young adults, they're working with folks, they're in agencies, they're practicing the work, they're participating, and maybe they're noticing like, hey, we never have meetings like after school hours. How are we going to get youth to participate? Or um, I've been to meetings in very creepy first basement floors of like abandoned uh, hospitals, like just empty rooms that state still owns. so we're going to meet there. Kind of creepy and a little hard to find. So if there's these pieces that are coming up for youth and young adults that say, we need them to change, the next bubble, right, this blue one is, if nothing happens, that youth and young adults are going to continue to have experience these negative things without any change. And I think for many of us, not just youth and young adults, if we continue to experience negative things after we voiced that what something needs to change or something isn't working for us, we continue to experience those negative things, we're going to find a new job or we're going to try to... Um, transfer schools, or we're going to maybe find a new friend group, right? That's not just a youth and young adult thing. If you feel like you're not contributing and not a part of the team, I wouldn't blame anyone for wanting to move along. So this green button, right, really is about the, pro the challenge where we can't retain those youth advisors. We can't maintain a robust youth advisory group, or maybe the young adult staff turnover is very high. And so then we start again. All right, let's bring in some more youth. All right, we're going to hire them. We're going to have an advisory group. They tell us what needs to change. Uh, we can't do those changes yet. Those are too hard, too expensive. We wouldn't know where to start. I'm not the one to talk to. The experiences, those, those things without any change, turnover happens, right? And so the part, the place that we want to think about engaging young people is between this yellow and blue star a lot of the times, right? Um, when we are hearing what the feedback is and whether or not we are, we are approaching it, doing anything about it, facing it head on. Uh, a very simple example can be uh, of a sincere policy need within youth peer support can seem really small, uh, but it has a huge impact on how young people connect is um, the use of cell phones and texting. So young people doing outreach, working with other young people is really common in a lot of programs, a lot of youth peer organizations. And it is the year 2023. Uh, we've put men on the moon. We've been 36,000 like feet into the ocean. Uh, I still have not seen a very strong model agency policy for using texting to reach out to young people or for ongoing support. Um, texting is, is commonplace now, right? Uh, the first text was sent in 1992. Texting is 31 years old. Texting remembers rotary phones and the landlines attached to our kitchen walls, and it remembers pay phones. Uh, texting could have gone to college and grad school by now to learn how to write a policy in for mental, aid, mental health agencies about texting, right? Like it's been a long time. We know this tech is useful. We're still struggling with developing robust, strong policies around it. So it can be a useful tool rather than this thing I know I have in my pocket, but I'm not supposed to use. So thinking about, again, this is something we're hearing a lot. We need to be able to text. There's no policy creation. Young people get frustrated with not being able to reach out to youth, youth not being able to communicate quickly or strongly. 
and they're, they're turning over. So thinking about even the smallest policy pieces can be really beneficial. Okay, so I don't have to like tell you all that policy is really important. I don't have to tell you all, convince you all that you need to be here to, to learn about why we need to do this work, right? I think many folks are looking for the how, what things are out there, what can I do, what do I need to know in order to make this happen? So the first thing uh, is Roger Hart's Ladder of Youth Engagement. This is a tool that you've probably seen in a lot of different formats. We have a couple specific things we wanna make sure we address when thinking about the ladder. So for folks unfamiliar, the first three rungs of the ladder closest to the ground are manipulation, decoration, and tokenism. These are not authentic means of engagement. These are often harmful. These are very much like using young people to check off that box, right? Oh, had a young person at the meeting, we're good. But if they didn't speak or didn't feel they could, not really engagement, they're just kind of there. And so this tool, as we go up the ladder, creeps closer and closer to youth initiating and directing their own projects, campaigns, et cetera. First thing about this ladder is the goal is not always to climb to the top. Um, if you use a ladder to clean windows, sometimes you're stopping at the first floor because that's where you need to be to clean that window, right? We're not always using all rungs of a ladder when we're on a ladder. So sometimes maybe in your budget conversations, right? That could be maybe step four, adult initiated, maybe the person who has the credit card statements and the bank, their social security number is tied into it and everything. Maybe they need to be 18 plus or a member of the board, right? That's a limitation. And so maybe we get to rung four and we're sharing decisions with youth about the budget, but it's still an adult initiative because of how systems, limitations, things like banking work. So budgeting, maybe a level four. Lots of places you'll see young people at the top of the ladder, right, is within their own youth programs, sometimes within youth advisory groups, support groups, within peer support, very much can be on the high piece of this ladder. The spot that we often try to get communities and agencies to, particularly around policy work, because it requires both those fresh eyes of young people who are experiencing whatever we're writing about, as well as supportive adults who have content knowledge, years of experience, they know the systems backwards, forwards, inside out, have that very technical know-how to, to offer that support, that learning to young people, right? And so sometimes we're really aiming for this yellow bar, this number two step, where things are youth initiated. We're supporting youth's goals, youth's uh, desires, what they need in programming, but the shared decision-making and the collaboration with adults is there and is how the work is done. So keep in mind when you see the ladder, Different parts of your programming may be at different parts of the ladder, that is fine. Maybe something new happens and you need to adjust your ladder. Um, that might be a new national policy that affects your staff. Uh, perhaps there's an issue with you know, funding, right? Things outside of this ladder can affect where we are on it. The point is, is that it's not a static measurement tool. We don't just climb it once and we're done. And it's gonna vary. You're gonna need a ladder for each part of your programming, each part where you're including youth and young adult voice. The next thing is this ladder is really handy in that it has a lot of verbs written right on it. So this is something we like to mention and point out because this is exactly what you can ask from young people, right? This sort of starts us off with, I want young people to be involved, but I don't exactly know what they might do. So you figure out the limitations of whatever kind of, if it's budgeting again, you figure out the limitations, okay, they can easily maybe consult with us. We could uh, offer stipends for them to review our budget, ask questions, uh, you know, offer suggestions. Maybe we are adult initiated, so I'm bringing the budget to them, but we're sharing some decisions. Maybe there are, there's parts of the budget that are able to be shared decisions about how much goes where. So when you're thinking about what you want young people to do, these verbs can be really, really useful. And when I say what you want young people to do, obviously we're not like, trying to trick them into doing things, but being clear with the ask. And so young people know exactly what they are supposed to be doing can be a really good feeling. I think many of us have been at jobs where we don't know what's expected of us. And am I doing this right? And should I be here? And where do I put my lunch? And you kind of just feel very nervous the whole time. Similar thing. We want clear guidelines, clear asks, and understanding that is shared between both adult and youth collaborators this is what we're doing together in this particular work. Specificity can be very helpful. The last thing about the ladder is that it's not all about youth climbing up, right? That puts all the work in the youth's court. 
Roger Hart, um, I say recently, but this may not be very recent. I think it was 2008, which that's a whole other conversation about how 2008 still feels recent. But he produced a second paper talking about how the assumption was kind of that this was a tool to measure how engaged your youth are. And kind of true, but he was like, really, it was about what do agencies, organizations, and communities have to do to build that ladder? Uh, that ladder doesn't magically appear, right? Someone has to construct it at some point. And so if you would like youth to climb up to rung three, what are you doing to build those three rungs? What's going into that work? How are you enabling them to use that ladder and meet you where you're at, right? Construction matters. Uh, I don't know if you have a preference. I would prefer to use one of the ladders on the left in this slide. The ladder on the right looks like it's been doing a really good job for a really long time, but I don't know that I would climb it. Um, a lot of times we'll hear, we've got a youth advisory group, we've got peer specialists on staff, we have a budget line just for pizza, we have so much pizza and snacks, and they're still not sticking around, they're still not showing up. If you hand someone a crappy ladder and ask them to get up on your roof and fix something, they might not want to do it, because it's not a very safe ladder. That said, design also matters, right? We know a lot of young people have a lot of different needs and different experiences and different perspectives. So if we're offering them a ladder to come join us, come collaborate with us, you're gonna need a few options for folks whose familiar ladders are made of different materials. Maybe they're different patterns and shapes, have additions like wheels. Uh, there could be accessibility or use features. There's lots of different ways to build and have a ladder, right? If we're sticking with this metaphor, we've gotta be thoughtful about, okay, so we've got the classic straight up and down ladder, but what if someone has to, you know, travel to get here. Maybe they need wheels on the ladder, right? What if someone wants to bring their cat? Maybe we need a ladder with holes in it to climb up instead, right? Another youth engagement strategy is to always have a cat with you, but I don't know if that's always possible. So we want to be thoughtful not only about the fact, yeah, youth have got to climb this ladder, but what are we doing to help them do that, to make sure that they are able to do that? And are we taking into consideration things like identity, geography, what's important to those young people, youth culture, um, what's going on around in the world. A lot of cultural historical events happening all the time now. What kind of things are we building and setting up for young people to use to come into this work, to collaborate with us? Um, but you know, if a young person is used to the orchard ladder on the left, you could hand them the shiniest, nicest, beautiful 30 foot, I don't know how big 30 feet is, 30 foot aluminum ladder. And they might still be more comfortable with the old fashioned orchard ladder made of wood, right? We've got to also be building things that are, are useful, familiar, and, and um, like in partnership with what young people already know. Our engagement strategies, our practices and policies that guide them, they must have space for these options, right? We know flexibility and wiggle room is really important in youth work. Otherwise, we're just recreating what we have so far. We're just building the same ladder, getting the same folks who can already climb up it. And if you're bringing youth voice into your policy work, then I'm guessing you know, just as well as all of us, that what we have so far isn't always working well. So we wanna be creative, we wanna be open and receptive to what young people need and be ready to listen and act when they tell you what they need to climb that ladder, all right? So as you're moving up the ladder, this is um, a chart of different things those verbs could, could open up, right? Uh, they could be informing you on website design, offering feedback. This works well on a cell phone. They could be consulting in focus groups. They could be offering uh, public comment in meetings, maybe some kind of polling or experience tracking, right? Once they're involved, they're co-facilitating, co-leading, co-designing. Um, they might serve as panelists. They could possibly facilitate groups. And once they get up to kind of collaborating, like this true collaborative piece, right? There's advisory groups. Like I'm on the official, official body that's telling you like what, what direction you need to go in. There's opportunities for peer support, lots of support groups, self-identification of what's needed, right? There's also this piece about research, which is really powerful. And again, much like budgets, sometimes that's kind of left off of the table just because eh, it's too boring and eh, it's too complicated. Research, including things like designing the indicators uh, that we're gonna use gathering data, writing reports, reviewing those reports, making sure they are accessible to young people. Even with things like dissemination plans, where are we gonna share this information? Young people know where young people are reading stuff. Like that's a super valuable partner to have in that work. 
And then, of course, as we move uh, to the right, right, we see things like steering committees, maybe more formal decision making, shared decision making happening. Uh, there's leadership pieces. There's this generation next component, which is really about shifting and having the support to shift again from a youth advocate to an advocate for youth to a supportive adult, right? Making sure that we're supporting folks. How can you not only do this work now, but in the future, turn around and give back and bring up this next generation of advocates. Um, and again, some things like independent research. At the bottom, you see our six uh, trauma-informed principles because those have to be happening, again, all the time for young people to be fully engaged and in a space where they can safely learn, take risks, try new things out, ask questions. If those six things aren't present, it's going to be really hard to retain authentic, meaningful, collaborative partners, right? And again, I would argue that's not only for youth and young adults. I think all of us would like those things in our spaces, communities, work, right? And so when we look at this chart, how can we sort of plug in different activities or use different strategies, different um, ways of, of gathering those information across this life cycle of policy, right? This is sort of a very basic interpretation of what happens with the policy piece, right? But for example, focus groups, maybe at the advocacy portion, they're participating in focus groups. They're telling you what they need. Situation analysis, they're maybe looking at that focus group data, doing some other research to line up with it. What is actually happening? What is out there already? What's working or not? And then they might bring what they learn in that focus group, right, to policy design and planning, making sure we've heard all the messages from the young people, making sure that we're lifting up those voices, uh, giving feedback. For implementation, they might serve as subject matter experts or collaborative partners, right, and offering either ongoing support, coaching, TA, all those sorts of things to really help and make sure that policy gets off on the right foot. Of course, monitoring and impact evaluation, this is really uh, about, like, making sure what's happening is happening and how is it going and do we need to alter anything, improve things? Um, do we need to go back to the beginning of the cycle and talk to more folks? Maybe this time they're facilitating the focus groups and taking the notes and writing the reports. And so thinking about how each of those activities can fit into each stage of this policy piece. A lot of what I've heard from young people is that, uh, th that the advocacy stage, easy peasy, folks we got focus groups, we've got interviews, we've got surveys. Lots of folks want to hear from lots of young people at the beginning stages of this work, right? But it gets harder for supportive adults and the professionals in the systems and the policy work to engage young people throughout the cycle because it's going to start taking more time. It's going to start taking more expertise. And so we don't only need to invest in young people as collaborative partners in this work. We need to make sure we're investing in our supportive adults who have the content knowledge but maybe not the know-how about how to best engage young people yet. Or again, maybe they don't know how to text yet. Right? I don't know if anyone still doesn't know how to text, but used to be a good example. So we need to make sure that both sides of this, right? Again, we're supporting young people to climb up that ladder, but we're also thinking about what staff, agencies, policies, et cetera, are doing to make that ladder sturdy and usable. Next piece can really involve um, some assessment, right? And we really like self-assessment as a tool for reflection, for thinking about where we're at and how we can maybe move forward. A couple of tools I'd love to offer all of you that are free of charge are our youth voice at the agency level assessment. This is, um, you can read more about it in this, this article. This is a validated tool ready to go on our website. Um, you simply request one. If you're gonna do your own internal analytics, you can take it and run. We have it in English and Spanish please feel free to use it. We also have the Youth Voice on Committees and Councils, which is a slightly shorter version meant specifically for smaller teams, um, you know, that are maybe steering committees, youth advisory groups, that sort of thing. There's also a how-to webinar available here, but this is something that you can also contact us about if you're interested in assessing where are we at with this Youth Voice? Like, how are we doing across our, our spectrum of policy, right? Uh, these are our eight themes. The first four are the ones included in the Y Vogue. So overall vision, collaborative approach, empowered representatives, and commitment to facilitation and support. So the Y Vogue's a little shorter. But within each of these domains, there are a series of questions folks will rate from one to five. One being lowest developed, five being, yep, this is a very robust part of our programming. Um, and youth take that survey, the young adults who are working with you take that survey, community members can take that survey, 
the administrators, directors, policy folks, parent peers that are all involved in your, your policy creation can, can take the, can fill out the why vow. And then you have a really comprehensive picture of like, okay, maybe we need to work on again, our youth voice in policy creation, but our youth programming on, you know, Tuesday and Friday nights, all fives, they're good to go. We don't need to worry too much about that. So it's gonna be a useful tool for self-reflection, either your council committee or your whole agency. This is also a fabulous piece of, uh, uh, it's a fabulous resource around specific questions you can ask yourselves about youth work and policy. Um, so is this right for youth to participate, included in guidelines or national laws or the constitution? What policies exist to make sure young people are already in this space? It'll ask you to consider the purpose of youth and policy. Again, folks could be ready to train up youth and they'll be board members and they'll run the whole show or there might be some tokenism going on, right? And so we wanna make sure that purpose is really named and clear for folks. And then there's lots of ways to assess sort of different levels of participation. Uh, these questions too can be, again, asked for lots of different types of your programming. You could ask these for specifically the budget work. You could ask for these for specifically, um, maybe the writing and drafting piece of the work, maybe the research and lit reviews of the work. Youth can be in all sorts of pockets of, of our processes. We just need to make sure that we're not thinking, we're not reflecting only on youth engagement as a whole, we're reflecting on each of those, of those activities, each of those pieces of our youth engagement strategies. Due to time, I don't think we're gonna hop into this, but I did wanna share what the YVAL looks like. So this is um, theme six, participation in developing policies and programs. Um, and so you see it's a simple uh, five statements, and then you rate them one to five. Uh, and it's really, again, to see, like, is the prep there? Is the support there? Uh, are we building that ladder safely, soundly, securely, and are young people utilizing it, right? Are we seeing both sides of that? The why that really gets at, we want to be working with young people. We don't want to be doing to them. We don't want to just create policy or change and be like, this is happening to you now. Uh, youth can also be perceived as recipients, so we're doing this for you. We heard that you wanted school days to be shorter, so we're doing this for you. Very generous, but not necessarily doing all those things we talked about in the beginning, generating self-efficacy, uh, education, collaboration in the community, not quite there yet. This blue section doing with youth is really, really important, and again, we can ask this every meeting you're at, every you know part of the work, again, the budget, are we doing this with young people? And if we are, how? And have we like talked with them about that in a little bit, right? Have we examined our own practices? So thinking, right, we wanna be in that with space. Some things that we have found to be helpful in terms of understanding or practicing uh, when we wanna be working with young people is one, thinking about our communication, not only in terms of like, how well do I talk or how well do I write emails, but how quick am I to trust others? with the information I'm, I'm giving and with what I'm hearing and how much do I wanna work with them, right? Um, I am also a little tired of the word synergy, but it is here because I'm referencing something else. But when we have a high level of cooperation, right? When we are willing to work with one another and when we have a high level of trust, I know that you're gonna follow through and do your half of the work. I know we're gonna follow through. We can trust each other to take some risks, try something new, be creative. That's really where we end up in that synergy space, right? Where new solutions are uncovered, possibilities is just like off the charts. Lots of different stuff can be imagined. And it really reinforces the risk and especially the reward of high levels of trust, right? For those of us working in systems, for those of us developing policy, both of those things have often harmed young people. And we need to be aware that we are in the process still very much of repairing that harm before majority of young people are ready to jump in and be partners with us, right? That's a trust piece. If we don't repair and sort of address the harm that systems have caused, we're not gonna earn that trust and we're gonna be stuck in this kind of compromise or like win-lose situation, which is difficult and not necessarily we wanna be when we're working with young people. Similarly, working with new partners, uh, influencing, meaning how much are we affecting each other's behavior and ideas, learning being how much information am I absorbing, right? We want to be in a place where we are really eager to learn and uh, uh, the, uh, get new information, right? But we also want to be in a place where there is dialogue back and forth, where there's change back and forth, where we are 
uh, showing each other, hey, this is a different way we could do this, and it could be really cool. That lands us in this generating ideas place, right? This is where skillful discussion is. This is where dialogue is, where true needs are addressed, where we are open and vulnerable with what's been uh, challenging or exciting in this work. And there's true collaboration up in this space. That doesn't mean that telling, observing, and asking are not useful, right? Asking is part of the consulting process. We might consult youth for things. Um, telling them as part of that direction process, we might see that more in like the manipulation area of the ladder. But certainly um, when things are urgent, when there are emergencies, when there are, um, when information just needs to be given, like it's just a fact you need to know, telling can be useful. And observing, um, I'm always been the talkative kind of in your face one. So I don't use observing as much as many people would like me to, but I have a lot of great friends who help me out with that. Uh, observing is really about watching, learning, thinking, kind of sitting back and just sort of feeling the whole thing out. Also super useful. So when you're working with young people and you feel like you're not getting anywhere, or young people, if you're working with your supportive adults, your partners and systems, you feel like you're not getting anywhere, check in with yourself. Do you feel like you trust people in this space? Do you feel like you want to work with them? Do you feel like ideas are getting exchanged or are you kind of just being told what to do? Uh, do you feel like you're learning something new? These can be indicators of where we might be on these scales. And while it feels like a very um, academic or cold way to think about like how we're doing in a space, this work is really heated. This work can be really heavy. It's very deeply personal to some of us. And sometimes these more like uh, technical kind of check-ins with ourselves can also be useful tools. Just keeping that in mind. I did promise you uh, positive quotations as well. And so some things I've heard that work really well, that young people have said, this works, this makes me engage, this helps me think about policy as a whole process, not just what I can brainstorm, right? Um, we've heard that when adults are excited to work with us, right, then we can tell they're ready to fully engage. If everyone kind of seems like, oh, I don't want to be here, I'm not maybe going to want to be there either. Uh, there are more experienced youth there, and there's opportunity for them to teach new youth when they join. So there's opportunity not just to be the learner, but the teacher in spaces. Uh, young people spoke a lot about compensation. And again, that can be a hired role or a direct deposit check. But we've also heard from youth who their phone bills are paid monthly as their form of compensation. So they can engage via Google Drive and Zoom calls, right? Um, there's young people who get travel um, transportation vouchers and things like that. So even if you're kind of stuck with like the payment piece, there's lots of creative ways to make sure they know their time is valued and you want them, you want to be working with them. Uh, this big one in the right, I really spoke to me because as this young person was talking, they were describing how much work their group does going to city hall, to the state house, talking to legislators. Um, but then kind of said, oh, well, they also come to our youth group. They also come like down, you know, downtown and visit our, 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 pro um, our projects, our, you know, art shows, things like that. And so, for that exchange, again, that like almost physical space dialogue, right? Like you'll come to us and we'll come to you, shows that we value each other's spaces, each other's uh, our work. And then on the right here, I think just speaking a little bit to how uh, technology makes things a lot more accessible. I could not be in Utah. I am able to be here with you all today. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, thinking about how do we maintain like hybrid use of technology rather than trying to go all back to only in person. Some folks also spoke to like the physical proximity people have to their legislators or policymakers can be really important. And for folks in bigger states, farther away. I'm in Massachusetts. I can drive to Boston from anywhere in like an hour. It's very small. So thinking about even just physical geography. Finally, this piece in the middle about supportive adults and folks in systems who are working mm -hmm. on policies, right? Be connectors, connect skills to opportunities to practice, um, to your own you lived experience, how okay. you come up on things. We you want to make sure that we can do this and then I can maybe send you the grant stuff and maybe we can start talking about that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Line is able to, but that would be great. Thank you. Um, and so I do want to honor our time. I was told 45 minutes we managed, which is a good day for me. The call to action really is about, we need you to be the champions everywhere, not just like nine to five when you're in the office, right? What many youth and young adults are asking for from supportive adults and systems partners is collaboration and demonstrated support. It is one thing to say, yeah, youth peer support's great, or yeah, we should have a youth advisory group. Um, 
but we need to also we need to be saying and doing more to show our our commitment to this work right um, again this is part of that repair work on behalf of the systems that have harmed we need to demonstrate that we're now reliable we're trustworthy um we need partners all across the board to be the one in meetings in the system within the agency within governing bodies to not only say yeah youth engagement's good but we need you to also say things like, yeah, it's important our student members of school committee have meaningful decision making power. How do we make that happen? Uh, it's important for us to know that adults and supportive folks in systems, policymakers know that youth coordinators in our city need additional support and they need a living wage. We also need to hear things like, that's a good idea. Let's plan to update our intake forms with pronouns and gender identity next quarter. We can draft that language together. So once you're saying these things, we need then for you to stand with youth and young adults when it comes to implementing those, designing those, and evaluating those things. This is work that is important, it is essential, and that kind of work in our field very often gets pushed off because there's a lot of emergencies, there's a lot of crises, there's a lot of important things that come up every day for a lot of us. We need to make the time to be the champions that young people have been calling for, that they have been asking for. I know there's many of you here in this space and I encourage you to take it to like one other community you haven't yet. Maybe it's like family barbecue, maybe it is a faith community, maybe you are participant in like a social group in your city. But even in all those situ situations, we can say, where is the youth voice? Where is, are the young people who are affected by these policies? Have they been included in, in the process from start to finish? or at any point. Uh, yeah, and so I just really calling on folks to, to, to be able to name what's needed, to be able to act on what's needed, and um, you know, have a little fun. Young people, a lot of fun to work with. There's a lot of, a lot of creativity, a lot of energy. I know that uh, some of us, especially these three years, like we're pretty tired. And so this, this fresh outlook, this fresh collaboration, fresh start can be really invigorating for many of us. So I encourage you to be those champions, to make the connections. I know there's plenty of young people who are really cool that are in Utah today. Like, say hi, uh, ask them what they've been working on, hear about their projects, connect to the folks that have similar roles to yours that those youth are working with, hear from those folks what it's been like to work with those young advocates and leaders. Really tap into that voice and expertise, again, not only of that young person, but the whole group around them that's supporting them and providing all of these things. If someone's doing this work well, learn from them. We can absolutely be partners and collaborators in that process as well.